Hi, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. I hope you've been enjoying the videos I've been posting. Uh, today we're going to work on one that was a request. It's a Pen 310 GT. It's a reel that was manufactured at the end of the century. I like saying that. Uh, actually around uh, 1999 to about 2003 4 It's an interesting reel. It kind of replaced the Pen 209, which is a level wine for salt water. And it's a combination, really. It's got a... Um, a frame very similar to the pen squitter and it has a feature function very similar to the pen squitter as well in that it has a toggle switch which enables you to disengage the anti-reverse dog so that you can back pedal the reel and fight a fish manually and uh, not tear up your drags. But today we're going to do a, a service on this reel. Uh, if you have one uh, it'll, it'll show you the basic mechanical features and functions that need to be uh, lubricated. Uh, if you're repairing one, I'll take it apart for you so that you can see how each, each piece and part fits. And if you're thinking of buying one, uh, I can tell you it's a nice reliable reel if you can still find them. Uh, some of the ones that you find are in some pretty difficult condition given it's about a 15 or a 20 year old reel. But uh, if you find one in good condition, and you maintain it properly, it'll last a very long time. So you can see I can start by taking out the four side plate screws. These side plate screws are a flat bladed uh, screwdriver and um, you can disengage. And then on top, we'll take down the handle and we'll get to your, your gear side plate. Now this reel is similar to the pen squitter in that it has a burring on both sides of the, uh, the the reel, so it makes for a very smooth operation. Uh, it also has the higher gear set, which is the, um, the gearing for the Pen Jigmaster, and it uses the identical G, uh, Jigmaster drags uh, as re replacement drags. There, those are still available through Pen Parts, and they're also available uh, online uh, <clears throat> through many tackle shops and the like. All right, you can notice uh, that I am using a parts tray. I use that for all small pieces and parts with the, uh, the reels. Uh, just helps me keep track of them. I would also tell you, um, if you're not familiar with working this reel, but you're starting to work on it, take pictures along the way so that you can see the progression. For example, I just took off the star drag, but before I took that star drag off, there was a spacer washer that goes on top of that uh, before the handle goes. But uh, if you have any questions, a picture is worth a thousand words, and you can uh, you can get in there. You can look at what you did. Next off, we're going to remove the four bridge screws. Those correspond with the holes in the back of the reel here. The one I already took out, and you'll notice when you take these screws out, <coughs> there's two different types of screws. There's a partially threaded screw up top, and there's a fully threaded screw uh, down low. Uh, the partially threaded screws up top go to the uh, become uh, posts for the uh, free spool release mechanism uh, springs to ride on. So I back all of these off, and then you can push the uh, the main bridge assembly through. And you'll notice I'm cupping my hand, and I also have a latex glove on my hand. Uh, that's just to prevent contamination and, and surplus oils and greases from getting on there. Okay, I'm going to take that off. You'll see this is your dog assembly. It has a notch on it and it rides to the back of the gear here. We're going to reset that just that way when we, uh, when we redo this. And we're going to uh, show you how to, to service the drags on this wheel. Uh, this wheel being very clean for the age. Okay, so I'm going to take this off. The drag assembly comes off. There's a furrow that sits up top. That pulls off. <clears throat> I'm going to guess this doesn't need to be serviced because I'm seeing some grease in here already. This has a lot of drags in it. It's a deeper drag set than the uh, than the, the pen. I believe it has one extra drag in here. The pen jig master, of course, it's a pen. Right, it has one extra drag set. Very clean, very new. Uh, drags here, so these are not going to need to be replaced. They should be lubricated, however. But uh, so, if you look, we have a drag ferrule, metal washer, drag washer, eared washer, drag washer, metal washer, drag washer, second eared washer, 
drag washer. And again, take your take your picture at this time if you're not sure what you're doing. Alright, I'm going to lubricate those because they don't have lube on them. I use a Pens, uh, I'm sorry, a Cal's Universal Dry Grease for that. And just a little screwdriver. I can use the one that I've been uh, taking my wrenches out with. And we're just going to uh, put a little, little on each. Some people will work these uh, the dry grease in with their hands. I think as soon as it spins once or twice, it kind of works all that in. Uh, however, uh, if you want to, you can spend a little bit extra time and you can uh, work these down. Now, you don't want to put too much on these. Uh, it'll just get pressed out and it'll be of no use. But uh, you do want to put enough in that it enables the drag washer to stay flexible. And I'm just I'm laying that on the uh, the metal wash. I'm not laying it directly on the the surface board that I use to protect my workbench. But uh, it'll just be a couple more. Now normally you only have the three felt washers and the three metal washers. In this case, you have some two more of the uh, the HD 100 drag sets. This is a be beautiful reel. This one in particular, uh, but the reel itself in terms of engineering and design. And I would tell you if you're in the market for one of these that uh, the, the value here this reel would be purchased by somebody who does not want the conventional reel like a jig master but would prefer to have the reel that has the uh, level wind feature in it that's the um, level wind assembly there so that you don't need to uh, manually spool the line to keep it even all right so the reinstall the drags then First fabric washer goes on. <clears throat> these, wa these are clean, these metal washers. If they weren't clean, you would use steel wool to buff them off. If it was particularly aggressive in terms of uh, corrosion on these metal washers, you could use a steel wool and a, a metal polish. Uh, I, I prefer a metal polish, an automotive metal polish. I use a turtle, wa turtle wax chrome cleaner. Uh, to, to get that done. You'll notice in that uh, drag there, I just put in the ear. That's your turtle wax chrome polish. Uh, but this, um, these, these don't need that, but if they did, uh, that would help clean them off. And then of course, don't leave the residual of that uh, metal polish on there. Just uh, go ahead and make sure that it's cleaned off. And to clean that off, I use paper towels uh, rather than a rag that can accumulate that and maybe pick up some contaminants in itself. So uh, the drag set is re uh, drag stack is reset. On this one, uh, it doesn't have the spool bearing in the assembly uh, that you would normally have. The spool is going to end with this. So it does have the side screw, uh, side spring. So let's just show you quickly how this uh, gets removed. Uh, you can press down on that spool gear and then you just pick up the, the transition piece for the free spool. That removes this, the spool gear and the springs that we were talking about earlier. These springs sit in an indentation on the, uh, the reel. And we just check to make sure that there's nothing like broken line or anything in there. And then you can put a little lubrication in this case, I use a blue grease, the pen real grease. Just use a little bit of lubrication on the idler fulcrum. And then, again, this is clear, and this one was lubed recently. So I'm just going to put a little bit on the collar that holds the spool gear. And put that spool gear back. We're going to reseat that onto the springs. And if you wanted to, you could push through those two screws. They didn't come out on the uh, when I took this reel apart, so I'll just push them through to show you. You can push those springs through. The, oh, I'm sorry, the screws through the springs. Again, those are the ones that are partially threaded, and you can do that just to kind of give you a little bit more stability in terms of resetting this. Once you push that through, you push down on that. Push down on the spool gear. Take that transition piece that has a wide and then a narrow hole. 
you start by slipping the wide over and pushing back and then we're back to where we started with that one and then on this one now we've got the the gear assembly has been uh, redone with the drags we're going to go ahead and put that in and as you recall we had a dog that had a um, a notch in it that sits over the spring on that main assembly so we're going to go ahead and put that in now And then we're going to line this up with the mounting holes. And I'm having a little bit of trouble with this. I'm going to put the ferrule on to straighten that out. in, making sure to catch that, that spring in the notch, lining that up for the holes, and then we can reassemble from the outside, turning the screws to complete that. Okay, so the first one is set. I'm going to go ahead and, and set the rest of the, the bridge plate screws. And you have to work that little dog spring a little bit. Now, if you have the 320, the 320 is almost identical as a real. They're high speed. They're 4.3. The 320 does not have that uh, automatic anti-reverse override uh, in that reel. I don't believe they do. Uh, and if they do, <clears throat> then you set the the dog spring similar to the way I did it you uh, you set that up on the one side of this and then you, uh, you reverse it out so uh, making sure that it's seated on that main gear behind uh, the, the, the tooth behind the main gear okay so we're set up there give it a little bit of a test we have the override on and we'll put that on okay and we're set Okay, so that's finishing up this side of the reel. So let's go over to the other side of the reel now. We have the spool. I'm going to take the spool out, and you'll notice that there's nothing but a carrier mechanism here. All of the work on the spool and the drive is behind this uh, plate. So we're going to go take that. But while I have this off, I'm going to go take the uh, pawl assembly. I'm going to take the... the, the carrier for the pawl. I'm going to pull that out and lube that. That comes out with a screwdriver. And you'll notice there's a pawl that sits in this. That just takes a drop of oil. Uh, don't put the lube in there. Uh, don't put the, the blue grease in that. If you put the blue grease into a pawl, it's going to bog it down and uh, it will not operate properly. Okay, and then we're just going to reseat this. This is a heavy duty uh, line carrier. It's meant for big fish, as the reel is meant for big fish. So uh, I, I like this one. I like it better than the way that it's set up on the, uh, the 209. Uh, I'm going to leave that final adjustment until we get this back on. All right, we're going to put the spool back in. There's a burring on this. Uh, there's not. Uh, we're going to put some some blue grease on the spool shaft itself, and then we're going to turn our attention to buttoning up this side, and then going to work on the back side, just to make sure that the the level wind feature is correct. So uh, we lube that up. We're going to put a drop of oil onto the burring here. I use Relex as an oil there. That uh, that's going to go on to the 
when you drive, you'll see there's a little, uh, little tab that lines up here. There we go. That seats the, the side reel. And then this one has the, the plastic is off. I'm sorry, the, uh, the main gear is off a lot. Many of you have seen me use this little centering pin. And then we'll put the four screws back on that. That's one. I go high, low, east, west, or north, south, east, west, if you like. I uh, like to keep balance, make sure that uh, everything tightens down properly and doesn't go askew. Uh, and that's what we're going to be doing here. So I did north, let's do south. That keeps equal tension on it as you go through the, uh, the tightening process, right? Okay. So I've been doing real repair for over 20 years now. Uh, I'm sharing my experience on YouTube. If you uh, like it, then I would ask you to like the video. If you'd like to see more, like the person who requested this, just uh, ask me if I fix a particular reel, or if I can show you how to fix a particular reel, and if I have one around, I'll, uh, I'll make that happen. I uh, I've basically built my business word of mouth. I got a lot of customers bring a lot of different types of reels into my shop. Uh, particularly this time of year as we're nearing spring and uh, people are getting ready to uh, set up for the season. They've all uh, basically come by and uh, dropped off their reels. Okay, so we're going to take a, a drop of oil to that main uh, shaft. We're going to put the star nut back on. Again, if you, uh, if you didn't remember the sequence on this, you could always go back and look at the pictures that you took if, uh, if you heeded the advice I gave earlier about taking pictures. Uh, if you didn't heed that advice and uh, you get stuck at this point, uh, there's a lot of sites like penparts.com, if it's a pen reel, that do have the schematics available for the particular reels. And uh, you could always go there and look up the exploded versions of these. Okay, so that little uh, collar washer went on there. And then the handle goes on and the handle nut. Many of you noticed when I started this video, I use a different wrench. There's a wrench that comes with these. It's kind of the standard uh, pen wrench. This one is an aftermarket uh, wrench. And uh, somebody had asked, where do you acquire that? <coughs> and the answer is you can also get that at penparts.com. Uh, they, uh, they sell that under a category called wrenches. How convenient. And uh, you, you'll be able to find it there. And I believe it runs about $15 plus shipping. But uh, if you do a lot of re real repair, or if you work a lot on pens, uh, then it's that's a beautiful thing to go do. Okay, we're going to go tighten this down. Okay, and now we're going to work. We're just going to reset this pawl. You can't over tighten the pawl to begin with. Okay, there we go. The pawl's working. So let's just do the last part, which is servicing the transition pieces that make that pawl work. Three uh, flat headed screws on the other side of the reel. Again, back into the parts bucket so I don't lose them at a later time. I never have to go look for them if I can put them in the parts bucket. And it's a practice I started a long time ago. Uh, I'm using the bottom of a uh, fast food container. It's nothing fancy. just holds the pieces and parts. I've been known to use bottoms of milk jugs and soda bottles and other things. It doesn't matter. Okay, the trim ring comes off. You'll see there's a little indentation in the side here where you can slip in a flat paper screwdriver. That brings you to the back of the spool, the transition gear that drives the uh, level wind worm, and the back of the level wind worm. And we're just going to put a little bit of blue grease on that, on, on all three pieces there. And you don't have to over lube these. This one didn't have any lube on it. But uh, again, the, with the multiple rep revolutions, it's going to spread that about. Just going to check the back to make sure that the click mechanism is good. It is. And uh, we're just going to go button that right back up. We reinstall this. Again, you look, you look for where your, uh, your screws, or mounting screw holes are. Bring the trim ring back those three small screws in and in a matter of about 15 minutes we've completed the service on your 310 uh, GTI 
and again if you have the 320 it's very similar with the exception of uh, I don't believe that the anti reverse click is off on that uh, you've lubed the, uh, the two bearings that are in this which guarantees the smooth operation and uh, you set yourself up for the coming season with where you can anticipate uh, worry-free uh, operation of this reel for a long time to come. Okay, and I just, just dropped that last screw on the floor. Okay, so without uh, searching for the screw, I'll get that in a moment. You can notice that the, uh, the reel works fine. It's a beautiful functioning reel, as I had mentioned. And I uh, hope this uh, video helps you to uh, service your own reel. Or if, it, if you're considering buying one, I hope it, it shows you the quality of the, uh, the product. And I uh, wish you the best of luck in servicing this. Again, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Thank you for watching.